Are we ready for a day trip in Geneva? Hi. Bringing the homies with me. <laughs> I'm Mike, the traveling scouser. And in this video, I travel to the Swiss city of Geneva for only one day. Flying out from Liverpool John Lennon Airport at 7am and landing at Geneva Airport just before 10 in the morning. So let's see what we can achieve in just one day exploring the city of Geneva. Got a more of a double decker train, able to lounge. <laughs> the train ride from the airport to the city centre takes just six minutes. One of the first sights you'll see on leaving the station is Havel's Place and Monument Brunswick. So just getting to the lake itself and here we have Monument Brunswick which is in honour of a 19th century duke so let's go explore it. Monument Brunswick has a quirky history. It's a mausoleum built to commemorate the life of Charles II who was Duke of Brunswick in the 19th century. He left his entire fortune to the city of Geneva in exchange for a monument to be built in his name. So we're at Geneva's biggest tourist attraction, which is Jet d'Eau. So the jet was actually constructed in 1891, which is incredible to think that it has been here for more than 100 years. More than 130 years, in fact. It shoots water up 130 meters into the sky and as you're flying in to Geneva, it can be seen on the plane. The jet pumps 500 liters or 130 gallons of water per second into the sky at a cost to the city of 510,000 Swiss francs per year. And you can come up close to the jet or fountain across the stone jetty. But be careful, if the wind changes direction, you could end up getting drenched. Welcome to Parc and Villa Lagrange. It's one of the biggest parks in Geneva. It's free to have a look around, so let's take a little exploration of this place. Set just a short walk from Jet d'Eau is Parc Lagrange, a large park with views that spread across the lake and the centerpiece in the middle of the park is Villa Lagrange, a large, stately home. So we're just really on the outskirts of Geneva itself, but what you can get are some stunning views right down to the lake, and it's such a tranquil setting here. Um, there's a lot of people running past, cyclists as well. It's a really active city and a really active part of the city as well. And it's brilliant just to be able to enjoy nature. It feels so tranquil here as well. The owners and builders of Villa Lagrange were the Lullum family and they built this manor house between 1768 and 1773. Located on the edge of the city of Geneva, the villa was used mainly by this family as a summer residence and to receive distinguished guests. The Floral Clock The Floral Clock was built in 1955 as a symbol of the watchmaking history of the city. Notice the toys and rubbish that surround the clock here. We thought this was part of an art installation. We were wrong, so we'll revisit the clock a little bit later on in this video. Just heading into Old Town. As Geneva is Switzerland's oldest city, dating back to the Roman times, it's only right that we explore the Old Town during a day trip here. Within Old Town, you can discover the hidden gems and alleyways that line the city streets. Views across Old Town in Geneva. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Just outside Cathedral Saint Pierre. Let's have a little look around what this beautiful building has to offer. Originally built as a Roman Catholic cathedral in the 12th century, this cathedral of Gothic style architecture was later converted into a Protestant church during the Reformation. 
It became known as the adopted home of John Calvin, one of the leaders of the Protestant Reformation. A neoclassical main facade, which can be seen here, was added to the building in the 18th century. Entrance into the cathedral is free, and for seven Swiss francs, you can also gain access to the North Tower. If you're not worried by the 157 steps to the top, you'll be rewarded with stunning panoramic views of the city and a crystal blue lake below. Whilst wandering the streets around the cathedral, just take a moment to pause and look up at the stunning architecture that is on show all around you. So if we look just behind me, we'll actually be able to see the oldest private residence in Geneva dates back to the 1300s and it is still in existence today. The building is called Maison Tavelle and it was built in 1334. Admission is free and a variety of different artefacts and objects focusing on Geneva's history on display within this house. Located directly in front of Maison Tavelle is Geneva's Armoury, and why it's called that is pretty obvious as it's home to real-life cannons and mosaics depicting some historic events, and the cannons are sat in the open so as to be touched and awed. For the next place we visited, we actually stumbled upon it by accident, but I'm glad we did because the architecture here is on another level. This is Hotel de Ville, again near Maison Tavelle. Formerly a town hall, it's now a council building for the local council or canton within Geneva. And it's possibly one of the nicest council buildings in existence. So I love finding these little nooks and crannies here in Old Town. And this place is just absolutely mind blowing. Um, it's absolutely stunning here. It's a council building, but the architecture is just out of this world. It's now time to make our way out of the old town. But as we do, we're making sure to look up just to enjoy the stunning surrounding buildings. And on our way out, we take a walk alongside the cathedral and we're able to take in and enjoy some stunning mosaics that are on display here. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a trip to Switzerland if we didn't make a stop inside a chocolate shop. Oh, sorry. Back at the floral clock, and this time there's no litter strewn across there. I don't know what that was there for before, but this is what it should look like. Of course, it's not installation, obviously, it's not. Um, but it should look neat, nice, and tidy like it is here. So, now that we're able to see the floral clock in all its glory, here are a few more facts about it. In the summer, there's around 6,500 flowering plants used on the clock face, and its second hand is the longest in the world, coming in at a staggering 2.5 metres. It's now time to make our way across to Palais des Nations, or Palace of Nations. Built between 1929 and 1936, this building served as the headquarters for the League of Nations, the organisation tasked with maintaining world peace following the First World War. The League of Nations is no longer in existence. This building is now used by the United Nations as their yeah. European headquarters. Same thing. <laughs> so outside of the United Nations building here in Geneva, and one of the things that you can see is this statue of Broken Chair. And this broken chair is symbolising fragility and strength in the victims of war across the world. And it is an impressive structure, but a sombering structure at the same time as well. The broken chair stands at 12 metres high and was constructed using five and a half tonnes of wood. And as can be seen here, one of the legs of the chair is broken, depicting the painful effects of war and landmines. So we're bringing an end to our day in Geneva, but it has been absolutely awesome. If you can, if you can do it from one of the UK airports, I'd absolutely recommend it. There's enough to do, there's enough to see. It's quite walkable in one day as well, though it is tiring, um, but definitely well worth the money. 
uh, Switzerland's not a cheap place to visit. So a day trip keeps it well within budget. So thanks for following me today. I've been Mike the Traveling Scouser. You've been awesome as always. Ciao for now.